you. I, I do appreciate the very kind introduction. That is far more generous than I probably deserve, but I, I do so appreciate it. And I have been thinking through something since Sunday, and I think given the introduction I just got, she said something in the video that she made in this morning that has been bugging me. And she said that I do business differently than 95% of my colleagues. Now, if you are like me, you want to know what's different, one. And the thing that I thought through very critically was, you people are coming here about thriving at work. You're not hearing about, you don't want to hear about how I'm different at work, right? So this is what I will tell you. If you will roll with me this morning, we're first going to talk about how different is and why different serves me and why different can serve you and how different can lead to better and how better leads to th leads to thriving. So can you roll with me on this? OK. So there is a difference between different and better. So I always tell folks, if you look in your life, and you see that you have the same kind of people and that is not working for you, going out and getting a different person but the same type of person is not better, okay? And so I think what I try and do is think about thriving at work and why, I'm, why I do that and why my team does that and why I want them to do that. Um, and I think the best way to describe it is this. I sit in human resources. So now I'm gonna ask you a really loaded question, okay? What do you think of when you think of human resources? Think of Put that in the chat. And then, Linda, if you can help me read the chat and the responses. Uh, that would be Kelly. OK, yep, that's Kelly. All right, so let me see I can here. do that too, Linda, if you can't see. So we have people maximizing human potential, helping people, support, connection, employees, paperwork, compliance, the center of an organization, the heart of the company, hiring procedures and rules, Capacity, ability, support, but watch what you say. Help me fill out the right forms. <laughs> Helping people, customer service, people, compliance, education, rules, compliance. All right. Support, so let me tell you what yep. I let me tell you what I'm hearing. So first of all, you are way smarter than I ever was when I got to human resources because I did not have a clue what it did. And what this also tells me is. I have some people on here who have had some really good experiences with human resources. All right. Um, let me tell you what I knew about human resources when I started. What I knew was that when I told people I was going to go work in human resources, they met me with a healthy amount of skepticism. They met me with uh, a, a, a small dose of fear. And then some people just saw me as downright contempt, just that had out, outright contempt for me. And I think. That's because what somebody finally broke it down and made it very clear to me was, May, the problem with human resources is it is neither human nor resource. Okay. And so when I got that clear breakdown, it became clear to me that what I needed to do was do some rebranding and some remarketing and that it had to be rethought. And so when I go into human resources or when I think about human resources and the way I practice, I want to make sure that people understand it's a, it, we're, we're human, we have resources, that we're here. Um, and that's, that's for you people who believe that human resource people are the folks who love people and we're kind and we're generous and we really like people. Now, for the other people who find us oh, full of paperwork and you need to be careful and I, you know, I, I need to think about this, this thing called human resources and why am I being called? What I always tell folks then is what we are is an efficient, effective, efficacious way of helping you do business. 
All right. I want you to rethink the way you do business. I want you to think about it as if you could come and you could be comfortable. All right. And you could bring everything worthy of the place that you work for to work. What would it look like and feel like? My job and my staff's job is to help you succeed in that. OK, so let's that's that's why I'm different. So let me tell you how it works for me. Um, if you've ever been on my team, if you've ever worked with me. All right. So let me give you my opening. Hello. This is your first day on the job. All right. I tell you, come on in. Let's sit down. I want to welcome you. I want to say this to you. I am excited to have you here. I want us to be really clear. I wanted you. I wanted you because you were great in your interview. But more importantly, I believe that we have the best and the brightest here. And I don't hire just to hire. And folks will tell you, I will leave a position open. I would rather have nobody than the wrong somebody, which means you're not only right, you're fantastic. Because you are on a team of people who are assertive, they are smart, they are groundbreaking, they bring it every day. And I love it that we can have the kind of team where people get to be the best, their best selves. And so I only want to hire people who come in and bring their best self and bring their best work. All right. So let me tell you, I'm going to give you your job description, but let me tell you what my job is. My job is to make sure that you are here, that you are engaged, that you are happy with you as a professional. Um, my job is to make sure that you remain competitive. But my job is to give you the resources that you need to succeed. All right. Because I believe that steel sharpens steel. Again, I don't hire the best and the brightest. All right. Your job, besides your job description, is to make the most of this great golden opportunity. That's your job. And I will give you opportunity as much as you want it. But your job is also, to, is also to soak me for everything that I'm worth. Get all the training you can. Go, I will try and provide you all the opportunities to go and attend different functions. My job is to push you okay. and to make you better. Yeah, no, um, I figured it out. Okay, that's somebody else, all right? So my job is to push you. My job is to give you honest feedback. My job is to set you up for, set you up for success. And then my job is to stay out of your way while you're doing all those things. OK, so that being said, folks, I only got two rules, two rules in human resources. It's really simple here. One, everybody gets paid on time. Right. I don't care what you do, but everybody gets paid on time. Right. And the second thing is this. We don't create any policy process or procedure that results in any type of bodily harm. Maiming death. That's not what we do here. Those are two things. That's it. Are mistakes going to happen? Absolutely. It's not the mistake that I, I'm worried about. I worry if you would cover up the mistake, and I would worry if you didn't come with a solution to it. Okay? And mistakes are great learning opportunities, but it's how you rebound from the mistakes that lets me know what type of person you are and what type of professional you are, okay? Now, the last thing I will tell you is this, we have a really good time here. We work hard and we play hard. Now, pre-COVID, I shut the place down. Periodically, we go off and we take an HR field trip and have a great time. So hopefully we'll get back to that. Now, there's more to my speech, but you've basically heard my intro for my team. So here's my question. I told you different. I hope that was better. So I'm going to stop at this point and tell and ask you this to put in the chat. So what kind of feelings did you do you have around the speech that I just gave? 
what kind of feelings do you have? Better, worse? How would you feel your first day if you got that for your welcome? There's a few comments, May. Empowered, inspired. I want to be on your team. Good, affirming, motivated, excited and challenged, straightforward and supportive, valued, great. I would be excited to start the job. Confident, encouragement, inspired, excited, challenged and encouraged, and on and on. Great. Comment. Well, this is good because what that says to me is I hope one of the things that that you get from this in, in, in this discussion and when you go into your chat room, you can talk about it. But I think everybody, if you want to thrive at work, thrive at work and you want to be the person who sets the tone, then the first thing you have to do is start with a belief that there's going to be greatness. All right. You have to believe that you have a superpower and everybody that you hire has a superpower and those superpowers are going to come together and they are going to create a new and better and wonderful product, whatever the product is. I don't care what the product is. All right. So the first thing is, what's the superpower? What kind of superpower do you need on your team? I always tell folks, I have a high flex. I try to hire people who are not like me. There's a whole, I may do some things really great, but there's a whole bunch I don't do not, I do not do well. I need those gaps filled in. So what's your first, what first thing is, believe in your greatness, but figure out what your superpower is and then figure out what kind of other superpowers do you need on your team? And who can help you identify that superpower that you need? Really important in this market. Um, I don't think anybody can be perfect at work, but I do believe you can be pretty wonderful at work. All right. Um, I, I always tell folks, my job is I advise really well, but I can't execute. Your job is to execute function. All right. The next thing, how do you want the greatness to show up? When I welcome you onto my team, I try to explain to folks, this is what we're about. This is what it's like. This is what I see. And this is how I see you fitting in. So again, encourage, help folks fit in, find their superpower. Then the next thing, give them those resources. In my team, I try to make sure everybody's comfortable and there are things we do. We do team building, we do exercises. We're actually bringing an outside facilitator so we can talk about what type of uh, strengths we have, um, how people communicate, um, how people want to be communicated with, um, what that looks and sounds like. And I have to, I have to have somebody from the outside do it because I don't necessarily see it. And I want them to trust that somebody else is telling them something from a neutral standpoint, all right? That uh, it's not just me because I'm vested in getting some, some work out of them. That's not what I want to do. I want to make sure that um, people understand whatever you say, it stays within our team. So every day, in my case, um, and we started this during COVID. I have a standing 10 o'clock meeting every morning with my team. Now, just so you know, sometimes the meetings last two minutes. Sometimes they last an hour. It just depends on how we feel and what we got to cover and, and whatever it is. But one of the things that we make a point of knowing and trusting is you can have whatever kind of feelings you want within our group, All right? But how we present as a team, we make that decision and we stick to it, all right? And so I think we built a commonality and a trust with each other. Um, we have a rule about let's be honest in here. Say what you mean. Um, someone said in the chat, oh, that was really straightforward. You ain't heard straightforward. If you really knew me, 
you would know I can be really straightforward. Now, for some people that works and for some people that doesn't. But I will tell you, one of the things that I do believe is we don't give enough honest feedback for people. And I also know this. I pride myself on making sure that my staff remain competitive with the idea that in this era, we no longer buy employees. You know, there was a there was once a mentality of if they don't come and stay for seven years or 10 years, what do I need them for you? You need them because here's the deal. And I know all it, none of you on this screen, none of you on this screen would, uh, would know anybody and have ever worked any place where people have come and they've just come to work. They quit, but they keep coming. They there every day. All right, they've retired, but they keep coming every day. Right? The bar has not been lifted. The bar has not been changed. There is no bar. But I'm sure none of you people have ever worked with those people. But for those of us that have, that's really distressing. Right? So I tell my hiring managers all the time, folks, you are not buying, you are leasing. And my philosophy is, like I tell my staff, I want you here. I want you engaged. I want you happy. I want you productive. I want you bringing your best self every day. I want an A game every day. And if I get that for three years, oh, God has been so good to me. Thank you. Three years. Yay! Because I would rather have A work for three years than C work for five. That's not how I roll. And so I am very clear. And that's one of the reasons I say what I say when you start. I want you to know this is a place where you come and you thrive. You come and you get better. And if you stay here and you, you continually get better, that's great. But if again, if you want to use me to do good someplace else, then as far as I'm concerned, I have been a success. Interesting. So I would tell mm -hmm. folks, um, oh, hello, Sarah, is that really a question for now? Or do you want me to get it? I'm assuming I'm going to do Q&A. So I see Sarah has asked, what do you do when someone doesn't bring their best self? We can have a chit chat about that. Um, because again, we're talking honest feedback. And I also would tell you, this is why you set the definition around best self or performance or bar or greatness because what you deem great and what I deem great are two different things, right? But I always tell people, uh, she or he or they that write the performance review pretty much get to define that, right? Based on that very should be objective list of performance criteria that you have. So this is what I will also say. I will bet money, everybody on this screen has some type of mm, electronic device, right? Be it an iPhone or a Droid or whatever you got, right? I will also bet that not one of you still has the iPhone mm, two or three. And it's not just because they didn't support it anymore, all right? Because you all got jobs. You don't have that phone anymore because that phone no longer suits your needs. That phone is no longer like even good. At one time it was fantastic, but it doesn't do what you need it to do because you and what has become available and what you need has changed. So folks, what is good at one point in your life, what was good at one point in your job, is no longer good, right? Remember, if you're talking about thriving, what does that look like now? So I would ask you all, are you the same person that you were five years ago? Are you different or are you better? And are you, are you both? 
Are there some things in your life that you decided that I'm going to focus on and I'm going to get better? And you're right. You do have to continue to elevate yourself. I think you do that in so many other parts of your life. I think for some folks, though, the concept of work and well-being and career well-being has been a new concept. And people don't think about work the same way. There is a person, and I'm, in some ways, I'm very much like this. Um, when I go home, I go home. Pre-COVID, my computer never left the office. Now, shh, let's not tell anybody that, but my computer never left the office because I had a clear line of demarcation. I would rather work at work, be here until eight o'clock at night and not take the computer home. COVID train changed a lot of that for me because I was working from home, right? But at the same time, I have learned how to shift how I think about well-being and career and had to reimagine that, especially after COVID and especially after kind of the blurring of the lines. So, um, you know, it's funny. Uh, Lindsay, you're a guest. I see that you have a wonderful question. How do you help yourself when... Um, what are some skills or processes that help you when you're on a supervisor as a supervisor on days when you know you aren't your best self? Folks, this is what I will tell you. Um, there are days I am not my best self. There are days I come in my room, as I like to call it, and I tell folks, OK, here's the good news. The good news is I am here. The good news is I can hear you. The good news is I am not quite capable today as I was yesterday for a variety of reasons. So I'm going to need you team to understand that, all right, and give me some grace and some space. So the number one, I do tell folks, I'm sorry, I have some, some competing interests today. I am always honest about that. If something is really, really bothering me, I say it concretely. Um, I do not try to muscle through it. I don't, the way other people may, all right? So that's my style. That's my um, that's my, my surviving mechanism, all right? For other people, they do other things. Um, my, I have a friend, she writes things down, what's bothering her. She writes it, she comes into the office and she sets it aside. And then um, she, she feels as though she's gotten it off her chest and she can concentrate more so on work. And then she goes back to it you know, at some point in the day or some point in the evening. For some people that works, that's just not how it works for me. Um, at one point in my life, I would tell you this, depending on how critical my function is that day, it might be something where I tell folks, okay, I'm gonna take a half day and I'm gonna walk away from this and I'll be back, okay? So. Um, I hope with some of this, and I'm trying to be very cognizant of my time here, that we've talked about different and we've talked about better and we're starting to talk about thriving. And so I know we're gonna go into breakout rooms and I hope I've given you some basic things. I think I'm pretty much on time. Am I not, Linda? Yes, okay. Uh, so if you want, we can go into breakout rooms a little earlier, if that's easy. Um, and then we can come back in and do the questions and have more time for questions. So first of all, and, and thank you very much for letting me pivot this morning. Um, I appreciate your flexibility in this and your grace. And so I hope when you go into your breakout rooms that you have some great questions and when you come back we can have a better discussion. <laughs>